Today we are painting a uh, um, nice reflection there. We are painting this, the Dark Elf Supreme Sorceress. I'm Alex and you're watching Winter Wolf Miniatures. For some reason. Before we can begin painting we have to build the miniature. And before that we have to open the package and remove it from the sprue. After a cup of extra strong coffee, you can do that up to 10 times faster, like I'm doing here. Then we need to clean the pieces a bit, but it appears someone has nicked my knife blade, so I'll have to fix that first. <laughs> Now when that's done we can begin. Heads up, the knife is now much sharper than it was before, so I do not recommend doing this at super post coffee speed at home. But don't you worry about me, I'm just a fictitious character in your head, brought to you by the power of internet. There we are, and I ended up cutting myself only once, but it was not fatal. Regrettably. The next step is easy, just glue the feet to the base, the miniature's feet, not yours. Close your eyes and make a wish. If you have been good this year, the miniature should suddenly be fully assembled. If not, do some more gluing yourself. After that you simply prepare whatever priming method you prefer. I prefer rattle cans, because they are quick and easy. On the other hand, I hate being outside in subtropical heat, so I'm using the airbrush. Make sure you spray some paper first to test the color. Yeah, that's black. Carry on. I'm going to prime my nails here as well, just in case I want to put on some nail polish later. I added some purple from below, but ended up not using it. But I thought I'll show you anyway, because on my channel I'm not going to hide the fact that I don't know what I'm doing. I decided I didn't want black primer on my fingers, so I went ahead and cleaned that off. I also cleaned my airbrush, in preparation for the white paint that's going to be next. The last thing I need to clean is this stained paper towel. That's easy, just spray it with white and no one will know. Job's done! We do a quick sanital spray like this. I'll focus on the skin, the miniature skin, that is because that's what's going to be the lightest. Cenitals are so easy, just spray the mini from above, and you get some shadows and highlights on there from the start. That can of course be done just as easily and uh, probably even faster with a rattle can. So next time you go rattle can shopping, if that's something that you do, buy some more different colors than just black. We will start with the skin, and since I'm not very good at painting realistic skin, I'm going to, uh, yeah, you guessed it. I'm going to sheet. This is a fantasy miniature from a fantasy world, so I'm going to make the skin tone non-realistic. And I'm going for a cold bluish look. Verdigris is the first color, and that goes on all the skin area, and then it should look something like this. Mm. This high definition close up is always so horrible, at least for me. At places the paint is not thin enough and there is a great deal of chalkiness. Well, I don't paint show pieces, I paint armies. The next color is electric blue, and this will be my shade color for the skin. I thin it, 
Mm, a lot. And then some more. And then I apply it everywhere. Where I want the skin to be darker. Since the hair is so white after the zenithal spray, I thought I'd try Black Templar to get it black again. I usually love Black Templar, but it didn't go very well here. If I had to do it again, I'd use something else. I then used Dark Sea Grey to base coat the boots and the loincloth, and then it looked like this. Teeny Tin is one of my favorite colors, and I use it to base coat all the metal things. And here I also decided to make her bra metal as well, because now she has plate armor, as you can clearly see. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, just google female warrior, and you will probably see that the only thing they need to stay safe is booby armor. Logic probably tell you that more armor is safer, but that's not how it works for female characters, as instead less coverage usually equals better protection. As nipple protection go, I guess a thimble on each one is your safest bet. Next I'm adding some scurvy green to the dark sea grey, and start the highlighting on the cloth. Okay, that's the backside of my lights, better get that out of the way. And then I'm applying, I don't know, some brown on the boots, but just at the edges and as a highlight. Plague Brown had a nasty name, so I chose that. It don't really matter though, I just wanted something a little bit more yellow to mix with the previous brown to get an even brighter highlight color. And after that's applied, it looks like this. You really gotta make sure you shake your null oil enough. That's probably it. I don't know. I'm using a very tiny brush here just to get a few drops where I want a little more definition. Dark Templar thinned with some water also works nice for this. Probably even better actually. Okay, this is uh, hmm, turquoise, and I'm using that as a highlight step on the cloth, and after that I'm using verdigris as the final highlight step. And probably mix those two a, a, a little. When that's done, it looks like this. Absolutely horrible in close-up like this, but on the battlefield it will look epic. Hopefully. I've also done some highlighting on the gold with a brighter gold, probably bright gold or polished gold or something fancy gold. And now for the probably most important step of this paint job, Squid Pink. Squid Pink is also one of my absolute favorites and I'm going to use it here to liven up the skin. So I use basically water that has at some point been close to Squid Pink and apply that on select places on the skin. I'll do it wherever I feel like the skin looks a bit boring and making sure to get places like the cheeks and maybe elbows and such. Since I have so little of it on the brush, it's easy to just go over the same area more than once if I feel like I need more. And in this way, I'm making sure I'm not overdoing it. Oh yeah, and here is something rare I found when editing. No, it's not the Bigfoot. While I painted the pink, uh, I'm just touching up some white on some places. You do this all the time since you have all the paints on the palette. But when filming a video like this, you try to get the format to a little more step by step than it actually is. When I'm happy here, I simply go back to the pink, and this time I use it a bit heavier, because I have a few selected areas where I know I want that. You go back and forth like this quite a lot, especially at the end, when you have all the paints on the palette. As you can see here, I have also done the hair at this point. 
I finished the face off camera and the last thing I did was to repaint the staff handle. I was pretty sure I wanted it painted in something else than gold but I left it for the end to decide. Once I knew how the rest of the mini would turn out and so on, I decided on green and here is how the miniature turned out. This whole miniature was painted in basically an afternoon, and those tiny projects is what I personally enjoy the most. Let me know in the comments what you enjoy most. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe. As you can probably hear, I uh, have a bit of a cold and uh, my voice is uh, a bit strange. But I thought I'd use that. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you soon.